Hey guys, this is Christian and today I want to address something that I was asked by many of you guys in the comments of my recent videos because if you paid attention to some of my tutorial videos you might have noticed that I made a few changes to my terminal setup. So first I'm now recording all my new videos on my MacBook instead of my Windows PC and second I'm using an entirely new terminal application. And what can I tell you, yeah, this new terminal that I'm now using on macOS is so much better than anything else I've used on the Windows. That is why I just need to show it to you and I also want to go through some of the modifications I've made in my dot files to make this terminal look great. I hope you will enjoy it and even if you don't use macOS, maybe you are running Windows or Linux, you can still watch this video because many of the things are working in the exact same way under these operating systems as well. The terminal application though is yet just available on macOS but the developers already published on their website. It's coming for Windows and Linux too. By the way, for those of you who are wondering, I haven't entirely switched my main operating system to macOS yet. I'm still doing a few things under Windows, but I'm certainly planning to make the full switch somewhere in the next year. Maybe when Apple releases a new Mac Pro or Mac Mini. Who knows what they will come up with. But anyway, I'm now prepared for it with this new terminal setup. So let me show that to you what I did there. This video is supported by Teleport, a free and open source access proxy that helps you to securely authenticate to all your IT infrastructure like Linux servers, databases, Kubernetes clusters, web applications or remote desktop. You can easily protect your accounts with modern security features such as two-factor authentication or a passwordless login and access your services through the browser or the CLI tool with audit logging and session recording. And the best, it's completely free in the community version so you can just download and run it in your entire home lab. Or if you'd like to use it in your company, Teleport offers many professional features like auditing, single sign-on and more. It's a great tool, so just check it out. You will find a link to their website in the description of this video. Before we jump right into the new terminal, I first want to say I'm still a pretty big fan of the Windows terminal. Yeah, I've been using that for quite some time and I think it's still a great terminal application for Windows. But unfortunately, it's not running on Linux or macOS, so I was kind of forced to find a replacement for that since I started to work with my new MacBook. And first I've tried out iTerm2, which is probably the most popular terminal application on macOS and that was okay but in the video about my new MacBook where I've used iTerm2 Cooper1101 has told me in the comments I should test out another terminal application called Warp Terminal and yeah I absolutely fell in love with this new terminal because unlike most the other terminal applications it has some very cool ideas and some very innovative features. Warp Terminal calls itself a terminal for the 21st century and I would absolutely agree to to that statement. It's a blazing fast application that's written in Rust, a very modern and fast programming language reimagined completely from the ground up and it's also compatible with shells like Bash, ZSH or Fish. And as I said, it's currently only available under macOS but the developers seem to work on a Linux and Windows version as well, so at least the website tells you so. And that would be absolutely wonderful because Warp does plenty of things a bit differently than you might know it in other terminals. But let's jump right into the terminal so I can show you what I'm all talking about. So first you will notice that the warp terminal is all block based and that means the command line input is placed at the bottom of the terminal and is always visible. So no matter if you're scrolling up or down or searching for something you will always see your current command. And every command that you execute is written to a separate block in this terminal window. So the blocks are kind of treated like separate objects and that allows you to do some very cool things with them. For example, if you typed in many commands and you got a huge history of work, you can bookmark a single block by clicking a small icon in the top right corner and that will show you a small colored square in your scroll bar from now on so that you can very easily track your entire work and mark certain points of interest. You can also easily copy this command, the output or both, yeah, just the whole block. And oh yeah, because I just see it right now, it does of course split panes, yeah, right? left, down and up as well. I sometimes forget to notice these basic things but that shouldn't be missed in a good terminal of course. Yeah? It also has a pretty nice search function so that works inside these blocks. With a control P hotkey you can open the command tab and that lets you search for a certain string. And you might also notice it can also do regular expressions inside this search field. Great stuff. 
But what probably stands out the most from other terminals is that the whole input handling and how you're working with this terminal feels more like a modern code editor than a simple command line input. Because what you can do in warp is, and I haven't really seen this anywhere else by the way, you can use the mouse to jump around in your command while you are writing it. And you can also replace text inside this command block as long as you haven't executed it of course. And that's also pretty cool and you can even do it in multi-line commands. So now it gets very interesting because you can just move around with your cursor to any of the lines above, edit and replace text or you can even spawn a multi-cursor below or above your current selection and work with it like in a code editor, edit multiple lines at once. So no preparing a complex multi-line command in a text editor first and then copy and paste it back into the terminal. You don't need to do that anymore because you can just use warp terminal like a text editor. For me, this is so damn useful, but wait, it gets even more interesting. So warp also has an artificial intelligence command searching. So when you open this, you can just tell the AI what you want to do in your terminal and and it recommends you a command for that. Let's, uh, for example, just display all hidden files in my current folder, which generates an ls-a command. Or maybe I would like to know how much memory is free on my computer. So this will give us a free-m command. Uh, but wait, that didn't work, yeah, because this is a Linux command. Let's be a bit more precise and let's ask the AI how much memory is free on a Mac. You can see this is so cool, yeah? I just like the AI feature so much because I think you can learn a lot about the terminal commands by just playing around with the AI and see which suggestions it comes up with. But well, I know this is not for everybody, yeah? I kind of had the same discussion with people about the new GitHub Copilot, for example. Some people like cloud-based AI suggestions, some do not. But anyway, all the cloud features in the warp terminal, they are opt-in features, so you can use them, but you don't need to use them. There's still so much other useful stuff in this application and I just want to show you one more thing and that is a feature I'm currently exploring and trying to figure out what I can all do with it. Warp has also something that is called workflows and workflows are collections of prepared command statements. They work similar to code snippets, yeah, just for terminal commands. And Warp by default already has a lot of predefined workloads that you can search for. For example, in the OpenSSL section, there are command snippets for converting SSL certificates. Or in Kubernetes, there are snippets for more complex kubectl commands, mainly to do maintenance tasks like rollback deployments or sort pods by ages. You can find these command snippets useful or not. But what caught my interest about this feature was that you can also write custom workflows as well. For example, I have created a workflow that will generate a new self-signed certificate for me. So this workflow consists of four different commands where I have defined some default values so I can replace it all in one single step. For example, the name of the certificate or the subject alternative name, how long the certificate should be valid and so on. And when I execute this workflow, it will just generate a new self-signed certificate. How cool is that? So that is actually making my life a lot easier and I believe you can speed up all your workflow in the terminal with this automation feature. If you like to create your own workflows and play around with it, they are just simple YAML files that you can store in your dot files and synchronize via Git. For instance, I have added some of them to my dot files repository on GitHub. You will, by the way, find a link to my GitHub profile in the description of this video. But I guess I should make a second video about that and go over workflows in a bit more detail because I know this is a, a bit too fast. Maybe when I used it for a couple of weeks and collected a bunch of useful workflow snippets. And please, if you have any ideas for what this could be useful, Perhaps you already have something in mind, yeah? Join my Discord and send it to me if you like, and I'll include the best workflows that I have found in the next video of Warp Terminal. And yeah, because we're just speaking about socializing and all this stuff, yeah, if you enjoy my videos and you haven't already done it, give this one a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel. That would be really cool because it helps a lot with the YouTube algorithm. Okay, so that was it about the warp terminal. You can see I'm very excited about this, but however, I'm still trying it out and see how it can benefit my day-to-day -day workflow in the terminal. I still want to go over some other stuff that I needed to change in my dot files and also my Starship prompt to actually make this terminal look great. Because when you just download the warp terminal and open it, 
it will look like this. And if you haven't watched my previous video about my Windows terminal customizations and you are wondering, so how is this Apple icon showing up in the terminal? Well, that's not coming from Warp. That is my shell prompt called Starship. And this works, by the way, on all operating systems and with all terminal programs. So it doesn't just work with macOS or Warp Terminal. You can also get your terminal prompt look cool on other systems as well, including Windows, Linux, Bash, and even PowerShell. On the homepage, you can find detailed instructions on how to use that under Windows, Linux, and macOS. I don't want to go through all the details of Starship here because I've already done it in my older video about my Windows terminal customizations. So if you want to learn more about that, go and watch it. I've put your link to this video in the description down below. So the Starship prompt works independently of Warp Terminal, but I still had a few problems with Starship and Warp. Because in the Starship config I created, I had a multi-line prompt with some arrow graphics that I hacked into the formatting string. And this is how it looks in iTerm2, for example, and that didn't work well in Warp. So I guess because it uses its own shelf wrapper to support the text editor-like features, the multi and so on, it just messed up the whole formatting string. So what I did is I just removed this complex formatting in the Starship config to create one minimalistic single line prompt that still contains a lot of useful information by the way. So just like the current git repository, the Apple icon of course, my username and the directory. So I think that looks now really nice even without the arrows at the beginning and I'm pretty happy with that new config. Of course, you will find this config also in my dot file. So if you have these kinds of problems with Starship formatting in the warp terminal, this is what you can do to fix it. To display this Apple icon and generally icons in the whole terminal window, I'm still using nerd fonts, of course. So that is also included in my previous video about Windows Terminal. Currently, I'm pretty happy with the hack nerd font. I think this just looks outstanding and I could also very easily download it on macOS, install it and select it in the warp terminal appearance settings. So nerd fonts, they work pretty well on macOS and warp terminal. But you might also have noticed the current theme for Warp. This is called Digital Life and I apologize for this old name. So that is what my YouTube channel was called before, by the way. Maybe I should update the name. <laughs> but that was certainly something important to me because I just wanted to use my own custom color theme and accent colors in Warp as well. And you can create your own theme file in Warp Terminal pretty easily. There are some example themes on the official Git repository. So I just needed to copy this whole stuff in just insert the color codes from my Windows Terminal theme that I already had created. And you just need to place these uh, theme files in your .warp themes directory and then you can simply select it in the settings. Again, nothing special in here, but I just wanted to show you what I've all changed to make this terminal look great. Some other small updates on my .files repository are more like organizational changes I made. For example, in the past, I added all the customizations for the ZSH shell in a single ZSH RC file file and this was a complete chaos to be honest and I just wanted to sort this a little so I created separate zsh files in one dot zsh directory one for the aliases that I'm using on my systems one for the functions which is still a pretty empty but who knows what I will add here in the future one for some wsl2 fixes and nvm fixes again nothing special in here the important zsh script to generate the apple icon is in here in the starship ZSH file. And you can see this is just a function that I've written to determine the current distribution or the system we are working on so that Apple icon only will show up on a Mac. And if you're using the same dot files on another Linux distro, this will write an icon for that distro into an environment variable. And this environment variable is displayed with a formatting string of the Starship prompt. So with that ZSH script and the settings in the Starship prompt, I can use the same ZSH config files or the same dot files on multiple systems and make this terminal look great no matter if I'm using it on Windows with WSL2 or on macOS. I could also use it on Linux systems as well if for whatever reason I would want to switch to Linux at some day. That probably never happens but anyway I can still do it with this config. And of course you can use it as well so feel free to copy whatever you want from my dot files and just use it in your own setups. I hope this helps you to customize your terminal as well and 
this was a bit interesting for you. Please tell me if you're using this on a Mac and what do you think about the warp terminal? Are these features appealing to you? I would really like to know. And just like I said, we will take another look at the workflows in the warp terminal. I'm still testing this and I will see how practical it really is in the day-to-day -day work. But, but that's about my new terminal on macOS for now. I hope you enjoyed it and thanks everybody for watching. Stay tuned for more tutorial videos, of course, and I will catch you in the next one. Take care. Bye-bye.